Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. So the world is at a turning point. The race to net zero is no longer just a dream, it is a reality unfolding before our eyes. Renewable energy is transforming how we power our lives and the evidence is clear. It's cheaper, more reliable and scaling faster than anyone imagined. Especially the International Energy Agency. From Tesla's Powerwall fleet stabilizing grids to the unstoppable rise of solar and storage, we are witnessing a revolution that rewrites the rules of energy. But why do some still cling to the outdated idea about fossil fuel? How do we keep up with a future where AI, robotics and renewables are colliding to reshape our world? Well, in this video, we will dive into that data, debunk some myth and explore why the shift to renewable isn't just inevitable. It's already here and why the future of Tesla's energy is brighter than ever. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So Tesla Energy rode on X. Tonight, the Powerwall fleet in California dispatched a 345 megawatts to the grid during a virtual power plant event, reducing the need for fossil fuel peaking plants. And they also showed that the two US markets with stable electricity prices today are the markets with the greatest adoption of solar and storage. Yes, it is getting harder and harder for people to argue against solar and battery storage. I know the US president has just done that, but given that he probably gets some of the data from someone like the International Energy Agency that has a history of getting this wrong by a lot, so he would have very wrong data. And because we have the AI arms race that I made a whole video about, the need to get cheap energy generation online fast has never been more important. But this is not something that will make our energy more expensive and the grid can handle all the EVs and so on. Because like Tesla has just shown, the decentralizing of the energy generation and distribution will actually help out the grid. The most stable grids are the ones with the most solar and energy storage. So the data is showing that the cheapest and fastest way to get more energy generation and also get more stable and reliable grid is to shift to renewables as fast as possible. So yes, Tesla's energy business will not run out of demand anytime soon, quite the opposite. But why do we still have people thinking otherwise? Well, because there are so many so-called experts that are making forecasts that are embarrassingly wrong. Every year, for more than a decade, the International Energy Agency, EIA, has had to revise its solar deployment forecast upwards every year. And not just by a small amount, actually installation have been as much as three times higher than the energy predicted five years ago. But it's not just EIA. Almost every organization that has tried to look at the long-term future of solar power globally has undershot, often significantly. So what's going on here? Well, to put it very simply, they don't understand exponential growth and disruption and the experience curve or rights law for that matter. I mean, just look at this chart here from the international energy agencies, prediction and actual numbers. I mean, if you are a forecast agency and are this bad at forecasting, you should just stop and find something else to do. This is simply just embarrassing. I mean, just look at the 2018 prediction here. They have all the data available from the last decade that shows them this exponential growth and also shows them that they have been wrong for more than a decade. So what do they do in 2018? They predict that this trend we have been seeing for the last decade will suddenly stop 
completely and even start going down. I mean, the amount of stupidity that must be gathered inside the forecast agency must be staggering. We even had this chart made in 2021, where someone put the actual solar deployment on this old chart and wrote, we are here in 2021. The best estimate is that at least 183 gigawatt of solar panels was produced. I'm not showing expectations for 2022 because that would be similar jump and make the picture too high. <laughs> but did the International Energy Agency learn? Nope. As you can see on this chart, we did see in 2022 the jump was even bigger. But then in 2023 and 2024, the jump became much, much bigger yet again. At least the EIA started saying, okay, there will be some growth. It will not be going down as we predicted in 2018. But as you can see, they are still thinking linearly. Even today, nothing learned. I mean, how the hell is the US government supposed to make the right decisions when the data they get from someone like the International Energy Agency is so bad? Or should we just say wrong? No wonder there are so many people that just look at IEA's forecast and don't get what is happening in reality. But someone did get it, and that was Tony Sepa who back in 2010 did predict this and showed that the decline cost curve for solar and wind and batteries were predictable. As Tony Sebar said, technology cost curves are like gravity. You can fight them, but you will lose. So this is also why so many people think it will be too expensive to make the shift to a renewable economy, because so many people are looking at bad and wrong and outdated data whereas it will actually be cheaper. So why is renewable energy continuing to get cheaper all the time? Well, that is the power of learning, something that the International Energy Agency is apparently incapable of. Over the past decade, the cost of wind, solar and batteries have dropped dramatically. This shows the incredible power of the experience curve. The idea that the more we produce and use a technology, the cheaper and better it gets. To make an accurate economic prediction, we must factor in this rate of learning. The International Panel on Climate Change IPCC, has pointed out the flaw in many energy and climate models since the 1970s. Those models often assume technology costs stay fixed, with experts manually inputting costs each year. They don't account for how costs naturally fall as technologies like wind, solar and batteries scales up. So like I have said in many videos where we are talking about things out in the future, people usually get it wrong because they use today's technology to try to predict where we will be in 10 years. But if you use today's tech, you will be wrong by a lot, as we have to try to factor in what new technologies are on the horizon and what laws we have to predict cost curves like we also know it from Wright's Law that Tony Sepa and Arkin West has been using to predict the cost curves. So it's not impossible to predict these things. Tony Sepa has been very correct. But when forecast agency don't use Wright's Law or experience curves, they will get it wrong and buy a lot when we are looking long term. For example, the IPCC's 2014 report, the AR5, estimates solar and offshore wind electricity at 11 to 12 cent per kilowatt hour. Today, those costs are less than half that amount. That's a big miss. The report also assumes that electric vehicle would only become widespread after 2050 <laughs> because lithium ion batteries were thought to be too expensive. But as you can see on this chart, lithium batteries have declined 30% every time production doubles. And not only that, today we have LFP batteries that are taking over that are even cheaper. And CATL has just started using their sodium batteries. So we might get something that is even cheaper with a new technology when it is scaled, as it doesn't use any rare earth materials at all. So this is why many predictions is off. Many models rely on so-called expert forecast and energy agencies that constantly underestimate how fast 
fast renewable technologies improves, like I have just shown with the International Energy Agency. And fossil fuel industries like oil and gas progress slowly as they don't really get much of rights law anymore as they are as big as they will ever get. So accumulative doubling is going to take a long time as it has already peaked and extracting fuel depends on geology and products are unique, used once, costly and risky. So the more fuel you extract, the harder it gets to get more. In contrast, renewables like solar, wind and batteries are modular and made of repeatable, recyclable, scalable parts. This makes their rate of learning much faster, driving cost down quickly. Yet many forecast agency and analysts still use outdated cost estimates. They underestimate how fast renewable improve and how much capacity can be added. As a result, economists and governments overestimate the cost of reaching net zero emission, which delay bold actions. Al Gore summed it up well. The sustainable revolution combines the scale of the industrial revolution with the speed of the digital revolution. Yes, it's time to change the outdated belief that fossil fuels are cheap and zero carbon emission is expensive. The truth is, net zero technologies are already cheaper, safer and more reliable. A rapid shift to renewable will create jobs, boost the economy and deliver massive benefits like cleaner air and less climate change. The sooner we act, the better the outcome for everyone. So we have so many technologies colliding at the moment. Cheap renewable energy generation being built at scale, where costs are declining rapidly and the efficiency is going up at the same time, making them even cheaper per gigawatt. Energy storage is growing rapidly as well, getting better and cheaper all the time, while new software comes along like auto bidder and virtual machine mode and so much more. Combine all of that with the rise of AI, which is very energy consuming, so the future need of energy has just gone up by a lot thanks to AI. And like Kathy Wood from ARK Invest has mentioned, the five big disruption platform right now, which is robotics, energy storage, AI, blockchain technology, and multi-omic sequencing. And Tesla is in three of those five. And they are all colliding now. So even if we look at the trends in energy storage and solar deployment and try to predict where this will be in the future, well, this is now getting harder because some of the new tech we have to try to put into our predictions would be artificial intelligence and robotics. And that is going to have such a huge implication of the cost of producing and deploying basically everything in the future. So if we look at the next decade from 2030 to 2040, I think it will be even harder to predict that decade's energy deployment and cost curves. As we suddenly have labor, we are basically able to just print more of and Tesla will be part of that market as well. So the evidence is getting undeniable that renewables are the way to go and it will not make our energy more expensive but actually cheaper. And when we have an economy run on renewables instead of fossil fuel, we'll also need less energy to do the same job as fossil fuel is so inefficient. Only like 30% of the energy is used. The rest is wasted as heat. So we are heading into a bright future, both for our climate, our economy and for Tesla. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.